I do a lot of product design and as a side effect of this, most of my prints just end up going into the trash. And worse is because of all the different design iterations that I do, I could be throwing away two to three rolls of filament a day just with these iterations. This is a really basic stand for the Super Nintendo. And what this illustrates is even if a product is simple, it's not always simple. You would think with something like this that it would be as easy as make a few steps and punch some holes in it with a bullion and then drop your cartridges in. But there's a lot more to that. In fact, I've gone through 16 different print iterations on this with design changes just to get this to the point that it's at. To illustrate exactly how bad this problem is, this is one of the more simpler designs that you wouldn't realistically see me doing. Normally, my designs are far more complex. You see, these cartridges aren't uniform. There's some manufacturing variations and there's some average going into play here. And there's a few things that we need to make sure happens with a very simple design that aren't so simple. If you look at these cartridges, you'll see that these aren't one single piece design. These are actually two different injection molded pieces held together by screws. What this means is we can't simply measure this and trust that that's going to be the width of the product that we are trying to make a dock for. Because we know that every single one of these cartridges is more likely that it is going to be a different thickness. And we need to find an average that we're comfortable with so it's not too loose, but it's not too tight for the stand. And you might be telling me, hey, why don't you just measure them all and do some math and find where your average is? But you see, that's not easy either because some of these cartridges are straight across the bottom while others have a slight bow or a curve for manufacturing. So getting an average based off simple measurements with calibers isn't really possible. If we look again, we'll see that this isn't our only problem. Not only do we have an issue with the average between the front and the back of the cartridge, but we also have an issue horizontally. Since this is a two-piece injection molded that is screwed together, we're facing an issue where our horizontal average is offset as well, as the front of the card could be shifted ever so slightly to the left or right. Lastly, each one of these cartridges has a step down the side of it and around the back. And because I'm a fan of design language so much, I wanted to make sure that my design matched with this step, meaning that again, we have another average to deal with. What this means is we have to do a lot of printing before we find a solution that works best across the board. If you have a product or idea that you've been prototyping and working on, then with today's sponsor, PCBWay, you can get help with custom manufacturing. Solutions like custom PCB manufacturing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and even 3D printing. And once you're happy with all of your testing and prototyping, you can send your files directly to PCBWay to have them manufactured. Some of my favorite options being their commercial grade SLA 3D printing, as well as the ability to have your parts 3D printed out of titanium and stainless steel. So if you're looking to take your project to that next level, then check out PCB way at pcbway.com. Since I've been burning through so much filament every day, it's important that I find a filament that's not only reliable, but also affordable. The requirements for this are fairly simple. Not only does the filament need to be affordable, but it needs to be readily available on sites like Amazon, as well as produce quality parts reliably. To solve this problem, for the last month, I've been trying out a new brand that's about 25 to 30% cheaper than the filament that I have been using. The brand that I've been trying for the last month is called Deeply, and you might have even seen some of the prints from that filament in my previous videos. While price is a priority, it's not at the top of my priority list, but rather the ability to print quality products reliably. These prints that I'm going to be showing are not my own design, but rather they're designs that I have picked that show the different complexities during the printing process, and they really give me an idea of the quality of this filament. And one last thing that I would like to mention is during my testing, I'm not tuning my filament profile in the slightest, but rather I'm just selecting a generic high-speed filament profile. The reason that I'm not tuning my profile at all is because I know that the majority of people running their printers are just using stock settings and they're not really tuning anything. And quite honestly, a lot of these people, quite frankly, just feel overwhelmed by all the settings. So they just leave it at a default. You see, 
I believe in a unified standard. If we don't have something to base our test on, then the tests don't matter at all. I could take practically any filament out there in the world and throw it into a printer and get it to print relatively reliably. With this thought process and using our defaults as a base, we can see that overall our files are coming out with good quality without any major defects or issues. And what these tests are telling me is I can reduce my overall cost for my prototyping and get back to what really is important to me. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea here. Yeah, I love 3D printing, but at the end of the day, it's not something that I want to just do all day is tinker and play with machines. Rather, I'd rather be focusing on design and product development. And with the quality and everything we're seeing, it would be really hard for me not to recommend Deeply as a good viable option for anybody with a 3D printer. The idea that I can just grab a few rolls of this Deeply filament and throw it into a printer is great to me. Honestly, I don't want to be tweaking printer configuration and tuning filaments. I'd rather be doing what I really want to do, which is design. And this concept of a baseline, it's something that translates into my design itself. You see, I know that the majority of people aren't going to be tuning and tweaking and modifying their configs. They're mostly going to calibrate their machine when it originally asked them, and then they're just going to start throwing in SDLs and hoping for the best. So this translates to my design because it's something that I'm very aware of. And this is why I end up throwing the majority of my filament away. Even for a simplified design like this, it takes a lot of product iteration and development before you get to a point where you know that you're not going to have problems no matter what you're dealing with. There's a lot more that I want to do with this file, a few different options and features, and overall just a handful of different tweaks. And this means more iterations, more test printing, and more filament in the trash.